Welcome to MOA Art Snack for Kids. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Twyla. And today we're going to work on a piece based on this mask called The Lorax by Linda and Daphne Potter. This mask is now up for auction at the MOA website, www.moafc.org, along with 200 other masks that you might like. Why do you think this might be called The Lorax, Twyla? Because it's a picture of a tree. And The Lorax speaks for? The trees. The trees. So you might have read this awesome book by Dr. Seuss called The Lorax. And the Lorax comes in and saves the trees. So I think that's maybe what these artists are going for. What do mm -hmm. you think? Let's talk about some other artists who talk about environmentalism and also they talk about trees. This is one of my favorite. His name is <clears throat> Hunter Wasser. He's a painter from Austria and he was an environmentalist as well. This piece is called The Singing Bird on the City Tree. He really wanted tr cities to have more trees, and so he talked a lot about planting trees, and he even did architecture where the trees were planted on the roofs. Another sculptor that uses trees in her work is Roxy Payne. This piece is called Graft, and it's at the National Gallery of Art Sculpture Garden in Washington, D.C. What's different from this from other trees? Because it's metal. It's made of metal. So it's super shiny, but see how the artists still use kind of the organic lines mm -hmm. to make it look like a tree? And the last one I wanted to show you is by Vincent Van Gogh. This is called Trees in the Garden of St. Paul Hospital. And I like his trees, how they have kind of that organic shape, but they also look a lot like the, the trees in the Lorax. So now you can make your own trees based on the Lorax mask. Some things that you might want to gather are some pieces of fabric or pieces of paper, some markers. We're using watercolors today, but if you don't have them, that's okay. Scissors, and of course, paper plates. If you don't have a paper plate, what can you do, Twyla? Cut out a circular piece of paper. Yeah, you can just cut out a circle. So, we're gonna keep looking at this piece to kind of give ourselves some inspiration. So one thing I'm noticing about this is it's going from all the seasons. So we've got this part, which is... Winter. This part, which is... Spring. This part, which is... Summer. And this part, which is... Fall. And back to... Winter. And we're about right here right now in Fort Collins. So there's lots of trees that are just getting ready to bloom. And um, it's kind of a fun time to be here. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with your, with your paper plate and a marker. And with that marker, you're going to kind of grow, kind of draw. Like two backward seats, kind of, or two forwards. Yeah, kind of like a tree. And it doesn't have to look like a tree that really exists. You can do a Lorax tree. You can do a Hunter Wasser tree. You can do however you want. But remember, in order for the viewer, for other people to know it's a tree, you have to kind of give them some clues. Like... For example, do kind of like the way the branches go with the tree. And so I'm just kind of drawing the skeleton and on this I'm going to put all the leaves that they've got going on. What are you going to do with this one, Twyla? Um, I think I'm just going to kind of, um, kind of make it stretch off the mask because oh. I'm kind of making it look, um, if you're, if you're, you might have seen it, but where I go to school, there's this big tree that I really like, and everyone plays around, especially on its roots. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm looking over here. They've used kind of a, a turquoise color for their base of their tree. Have you ever seen a tree that had, a, had bark that looked like turquoise? No. No, me neither, but you know what? It's okay, because when you're an artist, you can kind of just make it all up, just like Hunter Wasser and... Dr. Seuss and Vincent Van Gogh. I'm gonna give it a little bit of color. What color are you gonna make your bark? Um, brown. And some paper plates are gonna take the watercolor better than others. If you have kind of a plasticky paper plate, it's not gonna work very well, so you can just use markers. But see what your materials will do for you. And then send me a picture. All right, so I've got my base. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to put on um, my flowers. So what I've done for the flowers is I've, I've kind of separated all my things up into different colors. So they've used pink for the flowers. Oh, 
Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and so I'm going to take some pink fabric and I'm just going to cut it up into little pieces. And you know, these pieces don't look like flowers or leaves. They're just kind of like little color splotches. So I'm just going to cut some of those up and put them in this little salad, I call it, a salad of colors. So there's my pink. Okay. And then over here, I've got brown for fall and kind of some oranges and stuff too. So I'm just going to cut up some brown fabric. Oh, and how nice because it's a pumpkin container too. Yeah. <laughs> pumpkin for fall. Okay. And then for the summertime, I'm going to cut up some green fabric. I'm gonna put that and that's in. a coconut one. For summertime. Okay. So see how I've got these different colors? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some splots of color or of glue. And what did you say, Twyla, that you use in your art class? Um, dot, dot, not a lot. Dot, dot, not a lot. I am, I am using the dot, dot, not a lot technique made famous by Miss Babcock. Okay. Or, or Miss B. Or Miss B. Okay, dot, dot, not a lot. Now I'm going to take the pink... And I'm going to just, on each dot, I'm going to put a little piece of pink fabric. Boop. Boop. In no particular order. Boop. I just want it to be pink. And kind of have a cool texture. And you might get glue on your fingers. Wait until you're totally done to go wash that stuff off or you'll be in the bathroom the whole time and you'll miss it. Okay. Okay, so I've got pink. Now I'm gonna get my glue and do dot, dot, not a lot. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 And the next color is green. So I'm gonna find my tub of green. I'm gonna put all green on here. And just thinking about textures and colors and making it look like a fun tree to kind of sit under. How are you doing over there, Twyla? Good. I'm doing my green too. Okay. Now, I'm on fall, which is browns and oranges, all the colors that you see in the fall on these lovely trees. Okay, and I'm gonna find my brown tub, my pumpkin tub, and now I'm gonna put my brown leaves on the tree and orange. And see, I'm just sticking one there. I'm not getting glue on my hands at all. I'm trying to just kind of make sure I don't get stuck to the artwork. Okay. You on brown too, Twyla? Um, yep. Good. Okay. I'm on fall, not brown. Fall. That's right. Okay. So while I've got all my fabric down there, and I think I'm gonna draw a couple more trees, just a couple more down at the bottom. Get a little bit more interest. All right, and I'm almost done. What about you, Twyla? So am I. All right. And I might just make a little pumpkin to go. Okay, yeah, you're good with the pumpkin. Show everybody how you do your pumpkin. Okay, she puts a little bit of brown. Brown. All right. You ready to show them? And here's our finished Lorex, Lorex masks. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next week.
Bye-bye.